Hey guys, once again, it's Craig Beamer. So today we're going to talk about a modification that I don't see a lot of people talking about that applies to a lot of the common BMW engines out there. So about a year and a half ago, while researching more ways to get power out of an N52, I discovered a few people talking about something referred to as MILFs. The few people I saw talking about it on the forums had nothing but good things to say about it. They said increased power across the entire rev range and more torque in every gear. For a while, I contemplated doing it, but it wasn't until the current project that I had a good opportunity to do this. So once I made the decision to do this, I went to the only place where I knew where to find MILFs. After some time passed, I got a notification telling me that there are six MILFs in my area. I went to my mailbox to find six pieces of metal, and that's when I realized this must be some type of misunderstanding. Just kidding. So what are BMW MILFs? Well, the N51, N52, N55, S55, and N20 engines use a variable valve lift system referred to as Valvetronic. And no, this isn't any of that VTEC garbage. The Valvetronic system continuously adjusts intake valve lift varying how much air is pulled into the engine. To my understanding what the MILVs mod is, is replacing the intake valve spring supports with supports that are one millimeter narrower, effectively allowing the valves to raise one millimeter higher in the Valvetronic's max position. Basically, pulling more air into your engine. And as you should know, more air equals more combustion. For N52, the Dynagraph shows a pretty linear power gain across the entire rev range. So to access these intake valve spring supports, the valve cover does need to be removed. But luckily for us, our engines fucking hate gaskets. And your car is probably leaking oil as I speak. So, give or take two birds and one stone, there's no reason not to do it. Aside from the entry price, of course, this mod is a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones I've shown on my channel so far for N52. I paid 300 for used supports, but if you're buying new supports, uh, it's going to cost you $350. You can also get $40 back if you send in your old ones, so you can kind of factor that into your price as well. Also, if you want the full capabilities, you're going to have to pay for a tune, and we'll get into that more later. Alright, so today we're doing the uh, the MILVs lifter mod, and it's basically just the same process as doing a valve cover um, gasket replacement, which I need to do anyways. So I held off for this. Always remember to unplug your battery. So now it's off. Clearance is always a little tough pulling everything off. But N52 doesn't look bad inside for the mileage that I'm at. So here's the lifters we're gonna be attacking. Okay, so I'm doing the, the washer method, which says number two. Rotate the engine clockwise until cylinder number one intake cam lobe center is pointing just above the eccentric shaft cam. So here's the intake camshaft. Here's the uh, eccentric shaft camshaft in there. And uh, here's the exhaust one. So the center of the cam lobe, what they're talking about, is how it kind of bevels out. You can see it here on uh, number cylinder number two. So the center of the lobe would be about there. So it says pointed just above the uh, eccentric shaft cam. I'm thinking it's kind of like this, where it's it's kind of pointed upwards here. So it's kind of like just past the little roller. To rotate the engine, it's a 22 mil. Just put it, don't put a, a swivel socket, just get a breaker bar with um, a twisting end like that. And then it goes on your crankshaft here. Yeah, now I'm gonna rotate the engine clockwise. Try and do this one handed. Normally when it's dark like this, I just let the girl put it in, but that's not applicable Sorry, here, so. Struggling. So we're rotating the engine. Oh, 
my light fell over. I'm slowly turning it. I need to readjust. I've never manually rotated an engine before this. It's kind of cool. You can hear the oil getting sucked through. And Okay, now cylinder five's uh, lobe is pointed in the right direction. The first thing you're going to do... I'm using a paint marker, which is perfect for this. You're going to want to draw a line on the spring bolt. Just draw it straight down. Because what you're going to do is you need to loosen it an exact amount of times. So you're going to loosen it five times exactly. No more. And the instructions are very adamant that you don't want to loosen it more than five times. It's an E8. Okay, so you're going to count how many times it goes around. One. Three. Four. Five. And I'm not even going to go all the way because I just want to be extra, extra careful. So now, from here, you're going to take... This guy, this little washer, and it's gonna go in between the spring and uh, the bottom here. And I need two hands to do this, so I'm gonna put that under there and tighten it, tighten this, the spring bolt three times. Once you've tightened it three times forward, you're gonna remove these two screws that are holding down the support itself. Ah, oh, jeez, that, that was great. Um, they're a little tight. Keep that in mind. It's hard to do this one hand. Um, I'm not sure if it's important, but I'm keeping track of which one was in the front and which one is in the back. I just want to do everything very cautiously. I'm loosening these all by hand so I do not drop them. So I'm going to remember that that bolt is the front one. Okay. Same thing, I'm putting it where I remember which one's which. A little nasty in there. You can tell it's loose. What I'm going to do is take a screwdriver, flathead screwdriver. I don't know where I put it. Take a flathead screwdriver and very carefully push it out from underneath the spring. And there it is. Stock lifter number two. And take my, the modified lifter. It only goes in one way. The back is not the same as the the top so don't have to worry about that you'll notice there's a lot more room in there because you know it's smaller bolt them back the same way this one I had in the front well the top I should say and I'm not gonna torque it down yet but I'm gonna get it snugged because there's torque specs for these two bolts and there's a different torque spec for this one after. So I'm just gonna save all that for later. But yeah, I'm gonna do as much of this by hand as possible just to be very safe. This is my first time doing this, by the way. So now, once that's back, we're gonna loosen the spring bolt three times again because we tightened it three times. We're counting just so we make sure we don't Loosen it more than we need to, or than more than we should. So one, two, three-ish. Just gonna be cautious. So now I'm taking a magnet and pulling out that washer so I don't drop it. Now that the washer's out. Tighten this 
spec up five times and then torque it to spec later. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. Yeah, we'll torque everything properly in a minute. So yeah, that's the, the basic process right there. Winning. So the process is going to be the same for all of them, but you're going to notice that um, cylinder number three has a little oil squirter. It should just come off uh, when the bolt does, but uh, we're going to find out together. Yeah, the difference with that one is it has a different torque spec for those bolts, but everything is the same about that process. The uh, the bolts with the oil squirter, it's just sitting on there loosely. There's nothing special. Uh, just when you loosen it, or when you tighten it back, just make sure when you tighten it back, just make sure that it's squirting onto that the worm drive gear for the um, what's it called Valvetronic. So yeah, make sure it's oriented in the right direction when it's all said and done. Another thing you could do to help you get the lifter out is you can stick your screwdriver in and kind of pry up to lift it up a bit. Whatever works for you, just yeah, just don't damage nothing. When I'm prying them out like this, I'm just very careful, doing it very slowly, trying to get it out very straight. So yeah, then you're going to torque the, the spring bolts to 95 inch pounds, which is about 7.9 foot pounds. Uh, I'm going to need two hands for this, but uh, yeah, I've got my thing here. And I've got it set to 7.9. Another important thing is while these two are still loose, before you tighten them, you want to have, you want to push down so that it's as far forward as it's as it can go to where these these side parts are touching and then you can tighten it down to a spec first start with the uh, the lifters installed I'm a little nervous not gonna lie um, but I'm pretty sure I'm fine um, but you know there's always that thought in the back of your head like, what if it blows up because we you know we we're messing with it but um, yeah, I already put the key in for 30 seconds to relearn the Valvetronic, but uh, here we go. Alright, so, yeah, we're all good. Um, everything sounds normal now. Um, the... The injector on cylinder five wasn't plugged in all the way, and it sounded it sounded like a misfire. It sounded rough um, for a second, so I was a little nervous for a second, but but I'm pretty sure we're good now. So now I want to briefly touch on the various tuning options that support mills. So as of right now, 2021, it's basically between two companies, Stage FP and Castle Performance. Stage FP costs $650, whereas Castle Performance costs about $400 for all the ideal options. I wish I went with Castle Performance, but I went with Stage FP. The Stage FP tune is functional for the most part, but I wish I went with Castle mainly because the price point is nearly half the cost. I don't remember exactly exactly why I ruled out Castle Performance when I was researching this stuff, but it could have been the, the website's slightly poor design being that DME repair and the tune are on the same page, or maybe it was because I didn't want to send in my DME, but I wish I had considered Castle Performance more, and I'll tell you why. One of the selling points on Stage FP is that the red line is supposed to be increased to 7200. After I flashed my tune, my red line didn't seem to exist. Um, I really didn't want to try and find the red line, but I've seen my car rev out to at least 7,500, and that makes me just a little bit nervous. I had reached out to the tuner and, and told him that my red line appeared to at least be 7,500, in which he replied that it should be 72, 
and I replied again telling him that it definitely revs out at least 7500 and I never got a response again. Regardless of the customer service, honestly I think 650 is pretty steep to pay for an N52 tune. Not even 335 tunes are nearly as expensive as that, so even if there is less documentation on castle performance, I wish I had taken the gamble at least to give it a shot, because the price point is way more reasonable. If anyone has any questions about stage FP, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments, but anyways, here's the results of MILVs in my N52.